What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna to be talking about some more aggressive builds. I'm mostly gonna be focusing on other main ARs that would be viable. Uh, I, I covered most of the SMGs that I think are viable for this playstyle last time. Um, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go over those again, but I will link like the timestamps to the previous video so you can go look at those builds if you missed the last video. Um, but yeah, for today we're gonna to be talking about basically main ARs that I feel like are very good for uh, aggressive playstyles and finish up the aggressive series today and then we'll move on to uh, balanced and sniping and uh, like recon strat builds uh, later in the week. So we'll jump into it today. All right, so first thing I wanna talk about is the uh, M4A1 from Modern Warfare. This gun is basically just still the king of being an all round gun. It's good up close, it's good far, but it's not the best anywhere. It's it's just a really good all round gun. So this would be a more, more leaning towards a balanced build weapon here with the Grenadier, because this is going to give you pretty slow ADS times all around, so it's not going to be super good up close. Um, but you could do some things to, to speed this up for more aggressive builds. So I'd probably, if you're running super aggro, probably go Corvus, uh, Corvus Barrel, and then you could potentially go with the uh, Core Combat Hollow Sight as well, with a blue dot, if you have the blue dot. Um, and this would be a, this would be a pretty solid, um, solid, relatively quick ADS, very stable... Uh, M4 that's pretty good at all ranges. Um, if you really wanted to speed, speed up the ADS time, you could drop the commando. The M4 really benefits from the commando though, so this is harder to do. Um, like This is what I did with the, the AMAX in yesterday's video, as I took the commando off and put the tack laser on. And for the AMAX, it doesn't really make that much difference. Um, obviously it helps, but it doesn't make a huge difference. With the M4, the tack laser, uh, removing the commando foregrip makes a pretty big difference. So. This is more of a stretch than doing it on the AMAX, but if you wanted a really fast ADS M4, this would be this would be a pretty solid build. This would be fun to run, definitely. And then for a pair with that M4, um, I'd recommend either the Cold War MP5, Modern Warfare MP5, or uh, Mac 10, like we talked about yesterday. I want to quickly mention this build for the for the Cold War MP5. So basically, this is the non-hip fire build from yesterday's video, but I removed the agency suppressor and put on an optic because you can't really hip fire this build, and the iron sights are kind of not great. Um, I like this build a lot. Yes, it's not silenced, so you got to keep that in mind, but you're going to get a lot of extra range from the task force. It's still going to have longer range than the Modern Warfare MP5. Um, you still have the really fast aimed walking movement speed, which is important because you're not going to be hip firing. Um, you still have stable recoil because of the field agent and taking the agency suppressor off really gets that ADS time down, which is something that the Cold War MP5 struggles with a little bit is ADS time. So overall, um, I really, really like this uh, Cold War MP5 build. This might be my actual favorite Cold War MP5 right here. But like I said, with the M4, I feel like the M4 pairs the best with the Mac 10. So it would just be the standard Mac 10 from yesterday's video, the, the two that I mentioned. Um, either Task Force, uh, 5 milliwatt wire stock, agency suppressor, uh, 53 round drum mag. So this is the build I run a lot. Or another really common one is the non hip fire. And the timestamps of the explanations for all this, like I said, will be in the video. So this is the other really common build, is putting Field Agent on there and Raider Stock. So um, those are the two common builds. I feel like the M4, again, like I said, pairs the best with the, the Mac 10 just because the ADS times on the M4 are pretty high. So it's going to be tough to use it super up close. So you need something with a little bit of range up close. But of course, you can use the Cold War MP5 or the Modern Warfare MP5 with it too. Those would both be totally viable. It's just that the Mac 10 has a little bit more range. And then another gun that fulfills a similar uh, role to the M4 would be the Ram. So the Ram actually just kills faster than the M4 everywhere. So uh, this would be my recommended build with the Ram for this all-round uh, pushy, aggressive uh, gameplay. So monolithic, ranger barrel, co corp combat, hollow, commando foregrip, 50 round mag. Um, super fast DTKs everywhere. It's super reliable because it's one of the it's one of the 556 five, weapons. So um, it does the same amount of damage if you shoot them in the toe as it does in the chest, unlike the AMAX where you need to hit those chest shots. So it's very consistent um, is the right word for it probably, is it doesn't matter where you hit them. Um, it kills super fast everywhere. And it's reasonably controllable with this build too. You just got to get used to it because it does have that up and to the left recoil. It's basically the M4 recoil mirrored. Uh, so M4 goes up and then to the right, and the Ram 7 goes up and then to the left. So. Uh, it does have a little weirder visual recoil than the M4, and I think that's why a lot of people get turned off of it. But uh, overall, once you get used to it, it's not bad at all, and it's a it's a great weapon. So basically, the trade-off between this and the M4, 
M4 is a little easier to hit your shots, a little easier to hit your shots at range. Um, but the Ram 7 just kills quite a bit faster everywhere, so it's worth considering in the in the same slot as that M4. All right, so I want to give an honorable mention uh, for aggressive loadouts to the FAL. Uh, on paper, the FAL is amazing for close range, so we'll look at this, the actual stats on the website here in a second, but on paper, this is an amazing build. I personally am not good at clicking fast and still staying on my target. I know some people are good at that, so if you're good at that, um, this would be a top tier pick for your uh, aggressive loadout. So I've got Monolithic Suppressor, Marksman Barrel, uh, and both of those are just to extend the damage range and increase bullet velocity. Uh, the, the damage drop off of the FAL is relatively close. I think this only nets you like 28 meters or something. Um, again, we'll look at the charts in a second, but the first drop off is going to be at like 28 meters with this build, roughly. Uh, and then the TAC laser speeds up ADS time. Uh, VFK just for a clear sight picture. I don't really like the blue dot that much with this gun specifically. I feel like I have a hard time seeing my reticle. It just seems like the blue dot really blends in, and there's a lot of visual recoil with this gun, so it's kind of hard to keep track of that blue dot. Um, so I like the VLK with T-Pose more. And then the 30-round mags, just a, it's absolutely necessary to have the biggest magazine when you're doing uh, super aggressive builds. So, so yeah, this is a... This has crazy, crazy good TTKs across the board, and we'll see it on the website, but it's just hard for me to use, like I said, so that's why it's not like a top tier pick for me. It's just because I'm, I'm not good with, uh, you know, single fire guns where I have to click fast and move my mouse to aim at the same time. All right, so over on the site now, we've got the FAL that I just talked about, the Ram 7 and the M4. So the Ram 7 is the the long range version, so the Ranger Barrel Commando Foregrip Monolithic, whereas the M4, um, I swapped out the Grenadier barrel for the Corvus barrel just to get a little better ADS times. Uh, not not dramatically different, and you can use the Grenadier if you want, and it will extend your range a little bit. But just in the interest of making it have a little bit better ADS time, I put Corvus on it for uh, for this video. And then we've got the standard AMAX with monolithic long barrel, commando foregrip, 45 round mag, and the, the VLK. So that's the standard like AMAX. Not with the TAC laser because not that many people actually run that TAC laser build. So I just wanted to run it com or compare it to the most common AMAX build, which is definitely the Commando Foregrip build. So go through the stats real fast. Um, FAL, the fire rate says it's 470. That's about like the cap of the gun. So that's like you shooting it as fast as possible, uh, which is really hard to do with a mouse and really hard to do with a controller. Uh, but if you're one of the people that can manage that, then. Um, this gun's going to be really good. So when we look at the TTK chart, keep in mind that that's assuming you're hitting that fire rate cap of 470 RPM. Um, ADS times. The uh, Ram wins ADS times, followed by the Foul with the TAC laser, and then the M4 with Corvus, and then the AMAX. So AMAX is the slowest. Uh, Ram is the fastest, which is a very important stat. And one of the things that makes the Ram so good is it has really good ADS time. Um, these are all going to have the same sprint to fire because they're just ARs with no sprint to fire modifying attachments. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see the names of the guns as we do this. So movement speed, uh, FAL actually has the fastest movement speed, followed by the M4, followed by the Ram. And the, the M4 is only faster because it's the Corvus barrel, not the Grenadier. If you have the Grenadier, it'll be slower than the, the Ram. And then AMAX is in last. ADS movement, uh, FAL is going to be the fastest because it doesn't have the Commando Foregrip. Commando Foregrip really hurts your ADS movement speed. Um, followed by the Ram 7 and then followed by the M4 and then the AMAX. So these are both close, uh, but yeah, FAL is going to have the fastest movement speed simply because it doesn't have that commando foregrip. Hip fire, we're not hip firing these guns, so it doesn't matter. Bullet velocity, Ram 7 comes out on top again, but it's very close. I mean, anything over 1,000 for an aggro build is going to be great. And even the AMAX at 950, you're not really going to notice this because you're going to be up in people's faces most of the time, so I wouldn't put too much weight on that. Uh, reload times, FAL is the slowest, followed by the Ram 7, followed by the AMAX, followed by the M4. And then mag size, the FAL only has a 30 round mag, but it's not that big of a deal because the damage per bullet is so high that your total damage output per 30 rounds is, is very, very high. Same with the AMAX. A lot of people said the AMAX wasn't very viable because it had 45 round mag in the early days. But the total damage per mag of, of a 45 round mag in the AMAX is actually higher than a 60 round mag with an M4. So the number of bullets isn't that important. It's really how much damage output you can do with that magazine. Uh, and then something that holds the RAM back a little bit is that its biggest magazine is 50. So 
Uh, it doesn't have quite the damage per mag output of the M4 since they have the same, almost the same damage profile. You have 10 less bullets with the RAM, but uh, as you can see, there's a lot of other things where the RAM wins, which kind of makes up for it. Okay, so now comparing these on the DPS and time to kill, uh, right out the gate, this is chest shots. You can see that the FAL wins with DPS, but remember, all these, these charts are using that 470 RPM, which is very hard cap to actually hit. More realistic number for what you're probably going to be doing with the FAL will be 400 to, I don't know, 440 or something like that. So uh, unless you can master firing at 470 RPM, you're not going to be getting this uh, this DPS number. But uh, FAL is orange, followed by the AMAX in pink, followed by the Ram 7 in the cyan color, and then the M4 is the slowest. So the trade-off is the M4 is the most controllable of the group, no question. Um, the RAM is a little harder, harder to control than the M4, uh, but both of these have the same DPS for, for chest, you know, legs, stomach, whereas the AMAX will drop off when you change it from chest to something else. So let's check extremities or stomach real fast. Let's just do extremities. So extremities, uh, the RAM 7 has the highest DPS by a pretty, pretty big margin, followed by the FAL, and then followed by the M4, uh, and then followed by the AMAX. So the AMAX actually has the worst DPS when you hit legs of all of these guns. Uh, RAM 7, again, is the highest and that range extends all the way out to 42 meters. So the RAM is a really, really solid option. Um, you might be wondering why I don't include the FFAR in this if I'm including the RAM 7, and that's just because to me personally, the FFAR just really doesn't have the range, it, does, it doesn't have the controllability to be used at anything past like 30, 35 meters, which if you're playing super aggro, a lot of the time you're gonna be inside that, but every now and then you're gonna have fights that are a little longer than that. And to me, the RAM is a little bit more controllable at longer ranges. I love the FFAR up close. I think it's absolutely dominant up close, but uh, outside like 35 meters, I still think the RAM is a little bit better. So that's why it's not really uh, in this list. Jump over to TTKs real fast and just look at that since that's a more uh, granular number. So. Again, Ram 7 is going to be fast as CTK with leg shots or arm shots. Um, and then followed by the M4, followed by the FAL, and then the AMAX. But uh, the AMAX and the FAL actually both take over past that 40 meter mark. Again, you're not going to be trying to get those engagements that often, but they do happen and you will have to fight them sometimes. So this is where the AMAX and the FAL are going to be better than the other two if you land your shots. Going to chest shots, um, you're going to see the FAL is just has crazy fast TTK all the way out. Um, AMAX is a little bit faster on chest shots, but the FAL passed 35 meters way faster than everything else. And it's 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 a super good gun. It's just I have a hard time using it, like I said. So that's less of an option for me. Quick look at headshots. The FAL has crazy headshot damage, which is why I wanted to look at this. It does like 92 damage to the head. or 100. It does 100 damage to the head in the first damage drop off and like 92 in the second. So if you can hit headshots with this thing, it's insane. It kills so, so fast, way faster than everything else. Okay, so a quick summary of the three builds we talked about today. Um, M4 and a MAC-10. So M4 with monolithic Corvus Commando 60 round mag VLK. This is a really good, uh, you know, mid to close M4. ADS times will be a little bit slow for really up close. Uh, which is why we want the MAC-10 instead of like the Cold War MP5 because we want something with a little more, more range that can kind of make up for the M4 not being great in those uh, 25 meter and in engagements. This will be great for that. Um, this is the non-hipfire MAC-10 that I mentioned in the last video. Agency, Task Force, Raider, Field Agent, 53 round drum. Uh, again, I'll link in the description to this, this part of the previous video if you want to see the de description of why I pick what I picked there. Next build is the Ram 7 with the Cold War MP5. So Ram 7, Monolithic Suppressor, Ranger Barrel, uh, Core Combat Hollow, Commando Foregrip, 50 round mag. Really fast TTK everywhere. Better ADS times than the M4. Uh, better, better TTK than the M4, but you get that 50 round mag, which is kind of painful sometimes. Um, I still love it, I think it's great. Um, and this would be paired with the Cold War MP5 which would be the build I talked about earlier in the video, which is Task Force Barrel for extended range, LED, Microfex LED, just so you can see your target easier. Since this thing has a lot of recoil, it really helps to be able to see your target and correct for that recoil immediately. Raider Stock, because we're not hip firing this build, uh, which gives you really good movement speed, really good sprint to fire team time. And then Field Agent try to help that recoil a little bit, helps with the bounce a little bit, uh, helps with the vertical recoil a lot. Uh, 53 round, or 50 round drum mag, just because the salvo 50 round really hurts your ADS times. 
And then the last build would be the FAL, which is amazing TTK, but only if you can fire it as fast or close to as fast as the fire rate cap. Uh, it does have a lot of visual recoil, but it has really good ADS times, tons of damage per mag, good range, and like I said, insane TTK. So if you're one of the people that's good with single shot guns, give this a try. This will, this will fry people in an aggressive build. And then uh, I like to pair the, if I'm ever going to use the FAL, I would pair it with the, the MAC-10 just to give me a little more range. Because I don't, I don't like to use the FAL super up close just because clicking fast and staying on target when people are moving really quickly around me up close is hard for me. Um, might be different for you, but for me, I would run the MAC-10 with this. I also want to give an honorable mention to the FFAR. Um, so let's build the FFAR that I would recommend real fast with this. So it's pretty standard. Um, I use this all the time with like a sniper rifle. So I'll use agency, task force. People ask me all the time, why do I use task force? And I've talked about it before. Um, even though it says it hurts horizontal recoil, it actually kind of tightens up the spread left to right. Um, which really helps. Now, in this case, um, I would say because we're building this for longer range, since we, we aren't using it as a complete all-arounder gun, we already have an SMG, we don't need it to be super amazing up close. Task Force does increase vertical recoil a lot. So in that case, I would consider swapping Task Force to either the Ranger or the Reinforced Heavy, which would probably be the two other uh, most viable uh, uh, barrels for the FFAR. So... If you can't handle the vertical recoil of the task force, try either the Ranger or the Reinforced Heavy. Both of those are really good barrels. Ranger gives tons of bullet velocity. Reinforced Heavy gives damage range and bullet velocity. So very, very good barrels. Me personally, I'm sticking with the task force. Field Agent. Um, field Agent over Bruiser. People ask me that all the time too. Bruiser helps with vertical. Field Agent helps with vertical and horizontal. Um, but I like Field Agent just again because it tightens up left to right. I'm good at controlling vertical recoil. I'm not very good at controlling horizontal recoil. So I'm going to use Field Agent, but you can decide between those yourself what you like. Definitely still sell a 50 round fast mag. It's still bugged. It still does not hurt your ADS time. And then I would probably run either Vision Tech 2X or maybe like a Cobra, Cobra Red Dot, get you a little more zoom than what I usually run. I usually run Millstop, but since we're using this at longer ranges, maybe uh, Cobra or Vision Tech. Or if you're comfortable with Millstop, I mean, you can use whatever optic you want, but I'm just giving you what I use and what I would recommend. So I would probably go with Cobra for this build. So that would be my FFAR that I'd run with a Mac, uh, with the Cold War MP5 because the FFAR is going to be dominant all the way into, you know, 15 meters or whatever, where the, the Cold War MP5 can take over for you. So, uh, again, you don't really need that range of the Mac 10, which is why I would use the, the Cold War MP5 over the, the Mac 10 for the FFAR, uh, compliment. I want to give another honorable mention to the, uh, the AUG, the Cold War AUG for the aggressive builds. So, this is the build that I would recommend for super aggro, which would be agency suppressor, titanium barrel, field agent foregrip, 54 round drum. Remember, use the drum instead of the fast mag because the fast mag has much more uh, ADS penalty on the AUG for some reason, even though it's the other way around on the M16. So be sure to use the 50, 53 round drum. And then the Vision Tech 2X, good optic for aggressive play styles. So um, the reason I use the AUG for this instead of the M16 is just TTK related. Uh, the AUG has a little bit better TTKs than the M4, or the M16, sorry. Uh, it shoots faster. Um, and the reason I picked Titanium, even though it's been nerfed now and doesn't help with bullet velocity at all, is because we're playing super aggro with this build. So the whole point is to be up in people's faces inside 60 meters where bullet velocity is not going to be a huge, huge deal. Um, but if you do use this and you feel like the bullet velocity is really holding you back, then just switch to the strike team. Your TTKs will get a little bit worse, uh, but your bullet velocity will be astronomically better. So this would be another very viable option here. Um, the TTK is not great with the AUG when you don't hit a headshot in the mid-range, but if you hit one headshot, the TTK becomes insanely good. So it's, it's a risk-reward kind of gun, but I wanted to mention it because I do think it's actually pretty good for these aggro builds. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you liked the video. Um, th thank you guys so much for the support. As always, we're hitting about 90k subs today, which is insane. Uh, I'm going to keep this series going. I've got a bunch of videos planned for like balanced loadouts and recon strat and sniping. And uh, I'm just going to keep, you know, pushing out these videos that are hopefully going to help you build the best guns you can and explain to you a little bit my thought process processes when I'm when I'm building these weapons. So uh, thank you guys all for watching and I hope you have a good day. I'll see you all in the next video.